Hi, good evening or good morning or wherever you're at. Uh, my name is Matt Perez. Uh, my partner, Jose Leal, is in Portugal right now and is probably having dinner or sleeping or something. Um, so I think I'm going to be in this one alone. Uh, and today we have our guest uh, about Baidas and um, he's going to tell us what it is and then we'll try to figure out how, how it aligns with um, radical concepts and stuff like that. But we're talking a little bit in, in behind the scenes and uh, it seems like we're we're in the right in the right path here. So um, a lot a bit, uh, thank you thank you for coming and thank you for making time and um, and why don't you start by telling us um, about your business and the extent of it and stuff. Uh, thank you for inviting me this evening. Uh, I appreciate this opportunity to have this conversation or this discussion. Uh, my name is Abit Baidas, as it's appearing. Uh, I'm the founder of Identity Branding Forum, uh, a company that started in 2007 uh, to build the culture of branding in the Arab world that became today uh, its Arabic name synonymous with every project that runs in the region uh, for branding. And uh, my, throughout my life, I've been just known to be a very, very disruptive mind. I like uh, changes. I like challenges. I come heads on with challenges. Uh, years ago, a very good friend of mine, he used to enjoy coming to my office telling me for just one reason, because he liked to see my optimism. And, uh, and, and, when, and, and to him, I'm like a bulldog when I put my teeth into something, I don't let go unless, until I finish with it. Uh, and it's true to my nature. Uh, traveled the world uh, from the UK in 76 when I was I went to, to college to finish a, my A-level uh, to the United States, to Brazil when we used to own a chicken slaughterhouse. In my very early years, uh, Samsung Company Limited, which is Samsung today, where uh, my company's agent uh, representing us for uh, with the tenders that's running for the National Korean Livestock Federation, the building of their livestock. So I've been fortunate throughout my life uh, with the experiences that I have been exposed to, uh, the different cultures that I have traveled, the, the nature of uh, the leaders that, that I've been uh, dealing with just is, I, I, can, I couldn't say anything but very pleased uh, with it. And uh, when I started with the, uh, with the Identity Branding Forum, because there was something missing, especially in the, in, in the, in, in the Arab world, the Middle East, Africa, Asia, uh, in a number of countries around the world. We talk about branding. We talk about uh, the differentiations, the logos and the likes. But we didn't even touch the, very much touch the, the culture uh, behind the brand, how to build mm -hmm. that mentality that aligns uh, with it, uh, we, uh, we had uh, masterminds in branding behind the certification program that made us to be the where and we're still the only organization in the world that offers branding certification uh, for professionals uh, that would complete it uh, for five years and keep refreshing it uh, with that experience. It's licensed a number of universities worldwide. And... This is in brief where uh, what we about our identity branding forum and uh, being positioned or stationed in Dubai today uh, makes me very very uh, uh, optimistic in terms of the things that we are allowed to do the freedom of building the things and uh, where the world all over is coming to, to Dubai we are interactive we are learning new things. Uh, and able to do a lot of things that I will be sharing some of them with you this evening. Okay. Uh, thank you, Matt, for the opportunity. Well, thank you. So, so what what does the branding identity branding firm do? Does it build branding for the people, or does it give advice, or what is we the... do? Okay, we do a number of things. Uh, identity branding. Uh, we started as a service provider for branding services uh, to our politicians, uh, to individuals, to companies, to communities, uh, cities, uh, inst education institutions. Uh, and the, that's a focus. And then we, 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 we expanded 
when we realize there is a gap nobody else is filling, which is into the training and the certification, executive trainings and programs uh, for high level uh, companies and the leaders uh, in those companies. Uh, we also uh, we saw a huge gap uh, into building disruptive, sustainable brands. And that really led me to really start searching uh, the different uh, protocols, the different models that exist around the world. Uh, and the last of it was the SDG or the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations that most countries or most companies are trying to pursue. And I didn't find that enough. Uh, meaning uh, that uh, it, it deals with the side effects, like, for example, poverty. It's a side effect. What causes poverty? Right. Uh, it deals with the violence. Okay, that's a side effect. What, what causes violence? It deals with uh, poor education. But what leads to it? Uh, youth or kids' uh, prosperities and the likes are over. So when you go through the 17 of them, you're looking at the causes or the side effects of the real causes and while the real causes are not addressed. So I didn't see a real value, and that's why we haven't really moved much anywhere in the world. So I started searching with that, and the, basically is to uh, found my, my, my pursue is in a, in a verse in the Quran which is actually broken down individual's life, life, life cycle into four parts. Uh, weak to powerful to weak to wise, basically. And when I started sigma creating the, the understanding what should an individual from birth to the, to the 18 years old weak, uh, being dependent on everybody, should learn how to be progressing. So I started. we started looking at what the, the environment to be created for that kid before coming to life. Mm -hmm. And what happens from the day, day one to three years, uh, from three years to eight years, when they start going into society, from eight years to 11 years, uh, to 11 years, that's when they started going out of the schools and uh, into the higher market. And then from 12 years to, to 18 years, and when they start framing up their future and their ambition, what they're having, from 18 years to 40 years, and, and on. So that helped, allowed me to create a sustainable human development protocol. Meaning that every when the person is growing, it creates a new opportunities and new demands and new needs. That's disruption. That's the, 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 where I found the disruptions. And when you connect companies, the, our clients or our trainees, to people's lifelong journey, that's when we were able to really having creating a real meaningful sustainability. So now we're providing that protocol, uh, the training for companies for sustainability. So these are the services that we uh, we provide as an identity branding forum. So so it sounds like you have a process and you have training associated with that based on this verse of the Quran. It's really the life cycle of a, of a person. Correct. Okay. And um, you said something in passing. I don't know where you said it, but it resonated to me because um, you were talking about roots, going back to the root of things. It's what causes that? What causes this? What causes the other? And, um, and the, the reason we use the word radical in our, in our way of describing a system, and this is a system, there are many, many, it's, it's radical going back to roots, not radical as we want to kill people or anybody. Sure. Uh, although sometimes I feel like it, but um, going back to the roots. So we were talking earlier uh, backstage on the, you know, the fiat, the system we live now we call fiat. And, um, and fiat is because I say so. That's it. Move that box from here to there because I say so. But really what's behind that order is the threat of force. And what's behind that force is the threat of pain. And so you're talking kind of the same about the same thing. So um, how do how does um, how does knowing okay how's being lecture on on that art um, make a difference on people? It doesn't. I mean, people can listen to it and go, yeah, yeah, and pass the test, but that's it. 
they don't get anything. So how do you how do you manage to do it otherwise? Okay, how we we mastered it the other way, just like you said, the fiat model is what's being forced upon people. The SDGs, for example, uh, mm-hmm. model that everybody trying to be forced to it uh, to find at the end it's not working. Nothing yes. is going to happen. Uh, mm-hmm. We try to follow the World for Economic Forum's indicators. Okay, these are models and examples of somebody else because. Uh, what works for Microsoft is not going to work for me in Dubai, for example, exactly. as a small individual, exactly. uh, or what works for other people. So we try to mimic other uh, leaderships, not being ourselves. So we're trying to copy everybody, but really not unleash what we really want to want. And to get to do that, uh, this is why I started looking at a different customers. For example, years ago, when we went into the chicken business, uh, every, uh, our major competitors were pursuing the mom and dad that goes to the supermarkets to make a decision what chicken they want to buy. Okay, And what we did back then is really we targeted a different type of a client, kids. So we designed our chicken bags targeting kids. We had the roadrunner coming out of an egg. Back then in the 80s, it was a very popular uh, cartoon show. To this day, still my favorite. <laughs> still <laughs> being my, my hero. But anyway, so back is so, our, and that actually helped to get our chicken home because mom and dad don't care what chicken they want to buy, as long as the kid wants that bi- that bird coming out of that on that bag coming home with them. So we, we, so we started really focusing uh, here in terms of the uh, and trying to start seeing really uh, we, we, uh, how to find that client, that little client, the little power, uh, or what I call it, the power of littles, uh, to really. Take me home uh, to, to these people. So we started today. What we've done with the Sustainable Human Development Protocol is to look at the solutions uh, differently. When everybody is focusing on what expert is going to be doing something, well, I realized, uh, especially after the, the, the COVID-19 pandemic, that what I knew, or if I'm an expert of something, by 12 o'clock at, 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 uh, in the no- at noontime, Mm. I'm no longer that expert by 12 o'clock in the morning because the new ideas just came out faster and spread all over the internet faster than I yes. can learn uh, the new things. So there is no experience. There is nobody is an expert. I, so I eliminated the process and a lot of my mind that uh, nobody is an expert except one person. That one person is the one who is free of biases. And... I couldn't find that in business. I couldn't find that in colleges, of, uh, absolutely. Uh, where can I find that? And I found that in kids, little kids, youth. Uh, years ago, very popular uh, fashion, design, uh, fashion designer consultant, uh, he used to tell me when they want to get their ideas, they go to kids. They get what, what their imagination unleashed. How do they, they want to see their mom and dad dressed? How do they see their uh, teachers addressed? So they picked up those little ideas from them. So what we have done through Talents of Endearment, we created the Talents of Endearment platform, a dynamic platform that actually focus on enabling youth to empower business. So we reversed the way we have been addressing it or uh, reviewing youth. We have been really underestimating their capabilities, their minds, ideas that they can produce uh, to the world. They have been really, we talk about them, but we really never give them any considerations what they think they want to do, how they, how they see addressing the problems. And we talk about them being the future, but actually they're eliminating about anything being considered for the future right. and right. preparing them. So what we have done through Talents of Endearment, they created the platform that actually create an open space, free space, uh, free of all biases, no textbooks, no, no experts. Nobody's an expert in that platform where youth kids from high school level to, uh, to college, where they are able to come in, freely interact with others from around the world to, col- to collaborate, crowdsource ideas, and mm-hmm. actually freely work on those ideas and bring them out with the full supports that we will give them. And then we grew with that to, with the, to the points where, uh, well, how do we take it, how do we help them leverage it? Okay, so we went, we helped them leveraging it by the experiences they learned on two things, two, two services that they'll provide. Discovering big, big ideas out of box for companies or third parties uh, as a third party and solving market challenges. 
from their own perspectives because how how we help them to get connected in connected to, to people to the community to businesses engaged with them to understand their aspirations and actually work their imaginations finding up the ideal solutions from their own perspective mm -hmm. uh, giving them a chance to talk so we became that platform that allows youth from all over the world to really be themselves to think uh, themselves and to have that opportunity to actually make a living through another platform we created to complete the program, so we can does, actually become a solicitor. Does that work with, with adults? Can you bring it for adults? Yes. The platform? Yes. Okay. Correct. We created we, we created another platform called the TEPSI or the Talents of Endearment uh, uh, Smart Business Entrepreneurship that actually goes into companies that allows them to start learning how to interact with the market, to connect to the market, to engage to start figuring out people's aspirations and how to actually leverage, helping companies to leverage employees' uh, relationships, community relationships, to actually start finding out what the market really is about, what is so, the expectations of that market. An interesting thing as you were talking, um, because I'm very much the same, I've been saying that for a long time, the, ki the kids, the thing that kids bring to the, to the fore is playfulness. Kids learn by by playing with things, and Absolutely. you know you 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 write this way with this step, but they they suck on this step and they turn around. They play with the thing and they go, no, it only writes this way. Now they know it. They really know it, right? And the problem and what we do in schools, unfortunately, is is take that out, tear that out of there. It's like, no, 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 you're not here to play, you're here to be serious. And uh, when we get adults out of the schools, out of college in particular, um, they, they, people no longer respect the idea of playfulness. They, they think it's for kids, and I don't do that. And when the boss says, jump, you say, how high? You don't ask which way to jump, or how to jump, or should I do it with both legs or one leg or whatever. So playfulness is really, really important. And I, I'm, I'm heart and soul with you that uh, it's really important. And, and I'm, I'm gonna plug some of our thinking here. And the problem with businesses today, and you're solving some of that problem by kind of sneaking your way in, but the problem with uh, business today is that they take themselves too seriously. And they do not allow play. For the most part, they do not allow play. And uh, they're, I call them business hostels practices. And one of the business hostel practice is that they don't allow play. They don't allow learning. They don't allow any of those things. It's just do what you're told for the most part. Just do as you're told. It's a few people that get to do different things, but eventually they get fired. Um, and, and that's very much against what business is all about, which is to trade and, and create things and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, indeed, we are we're along the same the same lines. You um, so so the other thing that you mentioned that that could be understood out of this is change. You think change is good? Absolutely. You okay. see, like, like Einstein said, he, he's a man of curiosity. He lived his life being curious right. about things. And like you said, with kids love to play things. They don't just love to play with things. They are curious, actually, to learn things. Uh, when they, if they hold a, 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 a plate of eggs, for example, not because they want to break it, because they want to figure out what it is they, <laughs> they are learning. It's, it's their nature. This is how they are created. And we kill that in them when we start telling them, no, no, don't do that, just like you said. We actually we reduce their level of intelligence and engagement with the things that they touch in their life because it, 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 uh, us being responsible for it. Uh, there is a number of studies back then is the level of intelligence of a kid by the age of a three is 97%. By the time they hit, col they hit college and graduate college, it's, it's went down. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> because we tell them this is how you should be doing this. Yeah. Uh, funny. I want to share one funny story. A friend of mine is telling me he was in college, and he went to his instructor, telling him 
asking him for his for the notes for the class that he missed they have to prepare for the for, for the exam and uh, the professor told him and he says why don't you borrow it from your, one of your friends he says no, no because normally they don't copy everything i just want to learn to copy it and i'll bring it back to you in the morning and he said fine but make sure you bring it back in the morning so he brought it back comes the exam he finished the exam very quickly in less than an hour and when the results comes out everybody got their marks except him and he says, see the teacher. He says, what did I do wrong? <laughs> okay. The guy did everything was in the notes. So he goes back to his teacher and he says, well, where did you get your answers from? He says, what do you mean? He says, uh, I didn't teach this in class. He says, yeah, I got it from your notes. He says, no, it wasn't in my notes. He says, it still was in your notes. The shortcuts were in your notes. So the, the professor looked back in his notes. It's actually, it was there. It just was used to something that is it, it, trying to force on people. And this is exactly the problem, even in the education system all over the world. You got to do this and you're going to do this. Years ago, I was in a master class. I was teaching uh, in media. And when I walked into the class, uh, I didn't have books. I didn't have nothing. Uh, it was actually based on modern learning methodologies. The mm -hmm. name of the class was Media Planning, Buying and Management. And the, the students, one of the students raised their hands and says, um, uh, sir, are you going to give us the, the, the syllabus? I says, yeah, I'll give it to you. But I had no syllabus. I had no papers, nothing, no books. And they, they started talking to the students. They're all media people, okay, 13 students there. And then I start, he comes, raises his hand again. He says, sir, I don't see any paper. Are you going to give us any syllabus? I says, why do you need a syllabus? He says, to know how to, to pass the exam. He says, is that what you're here, is that what you're here for? He says, no, I want to benefit. He says, let's have an agreement. And I asked everybody else why they're in the class. I says, let's have an agreement, unwritten agreement. And there was a professor actually being trained. And I said, from the beginning of this semester to the end of it, I promise not to give you one single piece of paper, and you will not give me one single piece of paper. And these are the three reference books, but I don't advise you to buy them. <laughs> <laughs> Completely disruptive. Completely disruptive. I mean, it threw their brain. The guy says, what kind of a freak is coming to teach us here for the semester? And they're in master's class. And, and, and you follow what I'm, the way I'm going through this class, and everybody will get the marks that they, are, they, they desire. Three of them wanted to drop out, but they convinced to stay to, com to complete the class with me. Ended up, uh, they, they developed the projects around the, the ideas that they developed in the class. The Jordan te Television, for example, that wasn't in, in Jordan that was run, uh, actually adopted a program that was developed by an, a director that was in my class but with the idea that came out with the class. And all what it based about is asking questions around the topic and let them discuss how to, 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 to frame it. So they became actually the authors of the ideas they come up with. Mm -hmm. This is modern learning. Okay, this is what we we'll call disruptive learning. Uh, when you hand over the masterhood from the teacher to the students, and you just become a guide. This is a problem in education system, where mm -hmm. we, when we talk about the schools or colleges, when we still think we are the professors, we are the masters, the students have to follow what we say. And if we, ch if we start changing that, giving them a chance to be the masters of the ideas that they produce, that's when we really start change in the whole economic system, social systems, uh, well, universally. Let me, let me jump in there because uh, indeed schools are very much a fear hierarchy. It's the guy at the top, I say uh, Dubai is in Africa and Dubai is in Africa. And, and the way to pass the test is to say Dubai is in Africa. And uh, Dubai is in, it's not in Africa, by the way. But um, so what made you this way? The, the, the hair fall or what, what made you? <laughs> Actually, the hair fall is a result of what got me here. Uh, I, love, <laughs> I, love, I, I love people and I love change. Um, traveling throughout the world, I see a lot of kids, uh, especially in Latin America, I see a lot of poor kids uh, living in the streets, uh, in Asia, in Africa. And the numbers of, uh, the growing numbers of pains, like you, like you, you, you said it earlier, uh, of uh, unopportunistic youth around the world, you're talking about in the billions.
uh, it's not a small number. 38% of the world population of youth are really have no hope uh, to go to. When you go to countries like Jordan, uh, Lebanon, Egypt, uh, even that number and uh, a number of other European countries, you uh, the biggest problems actually they're facing or the time bombs everybody's facing is how to deal the future of youth worldwide. Yeah. When you start seeing the number of high school dropouts worldwide, it's a frightening numbers. Nobody would believe to, to know it's, it ranges between the 80% to 90%. That's you as an adult. Uh, uh, what? That's, also, what that's including youth. Let, talk about youth. No, but I, I'm saying what kept that playfulness in you? I mean, you're very playful, playful with everything you, you say. And um, so what? What caused that? I mean, you know, what caused that is I saw that if I want to create a change, I really need to go to where the change is. Who can create the change? The people who are free of biases, who are not limited to, hey, this is the way it is. This is the book. I got to do it by the playbook. No. I, uh, when I was in college, I was never really a good book reader. <laughs> I, really I never really liked to. I cheated a lot. When I was in college, because I didn't like to follow what 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 has to be, but I have to do it the way that the, the master wants to do it, so I have to do it to pass yeah. the exam, uh, basically. So, what I in order to create a change, I had to look for a, a, an environment where it's free of biases. I couldn't find it in an experts because experts are limited to the standards they created. They are proud but, about it and they get paid for it. But again, you, that's you as a college students. What came before? What came, because what came, they, the image that we have of the Arab world, and I'm, uh, caveat, I'm half Arab, so um, the image that we have of the, of the Arab world is that it's you know, very strict and dictatorships well, and all that crap. Right. So what happened to you? I, I, got, I was very opportunistic to travel the world when I was young. From so that made, a difference? Was, that made a difference to traveling? Absolutely. It, it got me exposed to a number of things. Uh, to, I, it was very, I come from a very affluent family. We were living in Kuwait. That's a different culture. Went to the, to the, uh, to the UK, went to the United States, went to uh, Brazil, to Latin America, went to Asia. I, I traveled the world. I saw different cultures. I, I got flavored. I felt the pains of the un unfortunate people uh, in those countries around the world. Uh, hmm. especially kids. So I got more attached to the, to the pains of the kids than uh, adults, basically, uh, hmm. because kids are helpless, and, and yet they are very powerful, and nobody's giving them that opportunity and, and the chance. So what got yeah. me closer uh, there, because I love to help people. I love to, uh, to, to, to touch the lives of people. And one story, actually, that it, it stayed with me and helped maybe to frame that. Uh, I was in Brazil years ago, back in the, uh, 1982. We walked into a store called Dunkin' Donuts, okay? And uh, with, uh, with a partner of mine back then. And there was a little kid sleeping by that door, 11 years old, okay? Mm. 11 to 12 years old, sleeping, literally, in, in the middle of in the afternoon. Walked in, came out, and the kids were still sleeping there. So I decided to walk back into the shop, picked up a couple of dozens of donuts, and he uh, came out and put them next to the kid. I didn't wake the kids up because I didn't want to disrupt his peace. And walked a little bit of a distance and, and stood there and watched oh, what was going to happen. Yeah. And what happened then, uh, people passing by looking, there's two bags of donuts sitting next to little kids, and he's not awake. He doesn't even know the fortune <laughs> next to his head, basically. Uh, a, a, an older gentleman walks by and stood by his head watching it. And my friend is telling me, let's walk. Uh, you already did what you, you did. I says, no, I want to watch what's going to happen. If somebody takes it, I'm going to go back and buy it some more. But I got to see what, how this kid is going to react to something that he didn't ask for. And... Uh, the, the older gentleman, they wake up this kid, point to the bags. And the next thing that I saw will never, never fit my, my memory. The kid looks in there, the, the most beautiful smile you could ever see in your life. But this is not what made me feel great about what I have done, is when he took 
few of those donuts out of the bag and gave it to the older gentleman. Close hmm. the bags and, and run. From that day, when I made a promise that I'm going to do something to help change the lives of youth worldwide. Whatever I can touch their life, I'm going to do it. And this is what really kept me going with this uh, in my mind until I had the opportunity uh, with Identity Branding Forum to really got uh, to do something about it for them. That's, that's a beautiful story and um, indeed very meaningful. Very meaningful. Thank it's you. The, it's the sharing. You, first you share with him and then he shared with the older gentleman and, uh, and then realized the fortune that he had in his hand. Um, Dunkin', Dunkin Donuts in 1982 in Brazil. That's interesting. Yes. This is, so, this is actually where I started having my passion for kids because I saw this kid was able to create a happy moment for that older gentleman. Yes. By giving him that chance. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's heart touching. And, and the fact, okay, so I'll tell you Brazil's story. So I was the founder of a company in 2007 that started as a self-managed company. We didn't have, we still don't have any um, management or, or hierarchy or anything, uh, almost. And uh, that was based on the writing of a Brazilian, Ricardo Semler, um, and he wrote that book in 1989 or something. Actually, it might have been around 82. Um, so it, it something came out of there as well that touched me and, and led me to this thing. And um, the company is like 900 people now, and it's still no managers, no hierarchy, no anything like that. And the reason I said almost, is because indeed my partner and I were the owners of the company. So ownership is, is a very interesting thing. It's, it's the right to exclude other people from the profits and this and that. And, um, and that's something else that we want to change with Radical. We want to introduce co-ownership. And co-ownership means the people that create the wealth, the people that make those donuts and can make somebody else happy with it, are the owners, and they decide what to sell or give it or whatever it is. But um, a lot of the problems of this world would go away if you gave everybody their own power, not equal power. I don't believe in, in equal powers. I'm, I'm few and born, and I don't believe in equal power. And um, But po po power based on contributions, not based on whether your parents were all off and mine weren't and the other guys were and you know that that's happy, happy i'm happy for you but it's a lucky thing right um and uh but it, contributions everybody can contribute like you say kids can contribute more than than adults because adults are already restricted but kids are are still a little bit foot and um those contributions should should be acknowledged and made tangible and and celebrated and all those things. So um, thank you, thank you for your time and uh, and thank you for everything you brought to this to this thing. Is uh, what time is it? It's, it's a little bit past ten thirty. Um, I think we can we can let it go there for a beautiful story and uh, I get to announce. Next week's um, guest is Leo Raymond, CEO of Eden Lab, Lab, and there he is. He looks like the guy from uh, one of the TV shows. And um, anyways, we're going to find out how he relates to the crazy ideas that we have. In, in, my, in my, by the way, in my case, the experience of of um, of self-management, the, the experience of seeing people organize themselves and kind of break out of their of, of that box that were they, they learned to live in, um, gave me hope and, and led me to a lot of the ideas and my co-writer co to a lot of the ideas that's in that book. And I have to, I, I'm obligated to say that that book is called Radical Companies, 
without bosses or employees. And there's another book coming up, but get that one. Um, and you can go to radicalcompanies.com and get the book for nothing if you want to. But, um, but indeed, it came out of watching people. In other words, they're, they're not forever burning through that box. They're not forever limited. But if you take some of the fear away, then they can expand back to being playful and learning more and things like that. So there's hope. And you gave me hope. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, hope is always there. I mean, as long as we know exactly where it is uh, that we really need to take care of it, helping kids uh, be themselves. Yes. And, uh, they will actually be the ones who's going to help us and the other ones going to be changing the future. Yes. And it's indeed. happening. And it's already happening. And indeed. with the with the limitations, with the with the with the few limited economic opportunities available to them in most big urban cities around the world, you're going to see uh, those kids uh, moving away to rural areas, creating their own beehives, using technologies uh, at their disposal because and they are much better at you using them than you and I uh, yeah. are to create their own economic future, to create their own economic uh, communities. Uh, we're going to see a lot of change happening in the future because yes. we still hasn't really put a greater emphasis on youth, on little kids, uh, and how to take, uh, to, take it, uh, uh, to take advantage of the opportunities they can create for us. And uh, we're still limiting them. They're going to take it away from us, and they will be the one who is going to take control of their own destiny in the future by moving away from the urban cities and rural areas. And it's already happening worldwide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and th things like the playfulness and the ideas and breaking the eggs to find out what eggs are, all that, all that stuff should be part of their, it's wealth that we we inherit, the whole community of uh, people, and that uh, should be celebrated and should be made tangible for the future. Absolutely. They shouldn't be sleeping in the street if they can contribute, and they can contribute, every human being can contribute. So uh, I'm... I'm I find myself, I, I figure I'm lucky to meet you, sir. Uh, same here. Thank you so much for bringing back a lot of good memories yeah, uh, yeah. that I have. Thank you so much for the opportunity, Max. Thank you.